that going here? Yeah. Oh, well, if we ratchet strap it here, yeah. we can run around the dunes. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have <laughs> all of them. I'm sorry. I'll give you mine. Yay! <laughs> Hey, we're here with Kenny from Tyree Lights, and he is sponsoring our Off-Road Fundamentals course this year. Yeah, so, right? I have to admit that, you know, to me, a lot of the lights in the industry are kind of the same. I've used several, mm -hmm. many of them. And I find that a lot of the lights these days, the focus more on being fancy and less on raw ruggedness. Yeah. And I have to say that the, the rugged light has gone away. Like back in the day, we used to run um, heavy floods and things like that. Kid them against a rock, they were no problem. Um, and they worked in all kinds of weather. And so when you send me the lights, I was like, great. You know, I've got lots of lights, but, um, you actually sent me, I believe this is it, like a yeah. D18 is mm -hmm. this one. Yep. And I was like, these are heavy. <laughs> and when I pulled them out, I'm like, this is a real light. <laughs> like it's not just an LED, but the, just the, I would say just the weight of it, but you can just tell that um, I could drop this um, probably 20, 30 feet mm -hmm. onto the rock and it would still work. And if it was on the front, it got impacted. I realize it's, not necessarily what you were thinking with it, but it's my understanding that you built these for mining industry and industrial, and Correct. that probably does happen. Yes. Yes, in fact, we, we actually were born in the mining industry. Our first customer was a mining customer that made equipment for mines. We've had some of our lights survive mine collapses where the equipment was ruined, but the lights still worked. So we have to develop these or design these to be super heavy duty to withstand anything. Our customers test test the hell out of them, and as do we to meet their requirements mm -hmm. to survive that type of environment. Now you guys are actually it's built in the USA as well. In the, yeah, in yep. Wisconsin. Built in Wisconsin. Okay. Yep. Yeah, which is also unusual. You know, a lot of the lights, of course, Chinese made or, or mm -hmm. something. So it's super neat to have like a American made light that I feel is really kind of an old school light. Mm -hmm. Truly, um, I don't know that. Um, I don't know that everybody will appreciate yeah. some of the attributes that this yep. light has, but I guess that's part of your guys' job is yes. to educate. Yes. Yeah. And one of the things we always say is we make serious lights for people who need to get shit done. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what we do. Is that actually the like the, the tagline of the light? <laughs> on the back of my shirt. Anyway. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I, like, I didn't see that on the box, but, but I do agree. And, and Liam, you have these lights as well, correct? I do. Yeah. I don't have a Jeep out here this year, but we did an overland tour through the, uh, the northern peninsula, the upper peninsula of Michigan, and Tyree came along. And actually, Cole from Tyree mm -hmm. went and attended the event, and he put that light again on my commando. On the commando, there is there is no like large bumper, and so we had to put them behind the grill. If you're familiar with the Jeep, it doesn't have your normal seven slot grill. It's more of a mesh. And I remember Cole being like, "Hey, we're gonna put this behind the grill, and I have no concern at all that it's going to look dim." And so we did. We put the the D18 behind the grill, and sure enough, that night it was just bright, 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 bright. And also, and it's funny because if I had mine here you would see that like, oh, they don't, they don't look so good. There's a notch in it. Well, actually we had mounted it and it touched the steel grill. The housing on this is aluminum. It's not plastic. It's not, you know, anything else. And it's thick and you look in there and there's, man, there's a lot more material in there yet to go. I could keep going and keep wearing into this, or maybe I should stop. But you know, if it happens, it, it has so much more metal to go. And it's really cool that, um, I pulled them off and I was like, oh, oops, but it's not, Chuck them, it's, you know, these are great lights. So Kenny, I do have some questions. So some things that I noticed about them, I really like, like the weather pack yeah. connection. That's really solid mm -hmm. as opposed to um, something that's actually built into the light that I can't replace. It also looks like there's sort of like these shock absorber yes. things for the mount. And I, I, am I interpreting that correct? Yes, it's, uh, it's actually vibration dampening system mm -hmm. that we have on that model and also this model, which is uh, really designed to survive on a dozer 
going over hard rock. Oh, I see. So you can imagine what kind of vibration and shock mm -hmm. ends up running through the machine with a steel track running on rock. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. And we even had one of our customers use these in a mine in West Virginia. They had a D11 Caterpillar running on solid rock with a ripper tooth in the back. Mm -hmm. And it was just, I, I frankly I, don't know how the operator survived. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know what a rip, I don't know what a ripper tooth is, but it sounds like a lot of vibration. <laughs> yes. With all the different lights. So like there's mm. HIDs, there's standard bulbs. Why did you choose this particular style of light? Uh, the LED? Mm -hmm. Well, LED is much more efficient, low amperage draw. Now LEDs are getting so efficient that we, you get a huge amount of light performance. The low current draw helps mm -hmm. you to put more lights on your vehicle and not overpower the alternator. Well, that leads into my next question is, are you finding with a, a standard complement of these lights? I know you've got a lot on there. Mm -hmm. um, with, like with mine, I have four. Um, I have about a 40 amp draw on mine. Okay. And um, I actually haven't checked it versus the alternator, mm -hmm. uh, if it, it's output. And I think it's gonna be fine. Yep. But um, are you finding that a lot of people are not having to do alternator upgrades or double battery systems or something like that? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, on my my Rubicon here, I have 12, 14 lights on there. Mm -hmm. I can run for hours and it doesn't affect the uh, voltage coming out of the battery. Because right. uh, that's the first thing you'd see if it was drawing too much power is the battery voltage mm -hmm. would start to drop mm -hmm. significantly. I haven't seen any noticeable difference whatsoever uh, running them full on for two or three hours. Okay, um, and these have really deep like cooling fins. Yeah, are these run these run hot. Like, could I go touch these and they would be hot? Or uh, no, that's the purpose of the the, the fins. Okay. Uh, heat is the enemy of electronics mm -hmm. and the enemy of LEDs. So we have these fins on here to help draw the heat away, so we can get more performance. It draws the heat away, and part of our design criteria is mm -hmm. that you can touch the back of it and not get burned. Okay. And part of what you talked about was the heat being the enemy of electronics, and like with a lot of machines or lights or things, usually they, like there's a, like it will last 80,000 hours or mm -hmm. something like that. What is the replacement time for these? Uh, we designed these to last 50,000 hours, which is, uh, you know, for an off-roader is probably about 15 years. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, most like construction machines, like a backhoe mm -hmm. or a wheel loader, uh, are designed to last 15,000 hours. I see. So these can easily outlast, outlive that type of equipment. Yeah, of course, Kenny doesn't know us really well, so we have really old vehicles, so <laughs> everything we accumulate never goes away. Yeah. No. So once we put something like this on, uh, it's gonna be there in 40 years. So. Yeah, it's staying. Um, is all the parts, uh, like can you get replacement parts? I realize it's a long time out, but yeah. if for some reason um, something uh, burned out or lens yes. broke, something like that. Uh, yeah, lenses are all replaceable. The bezel in the front is all replaceable. Bracketry is all replaceable. Uh, so it's uh, uh, easily serviceable. Mm -hmm. And uh, and if but if the printed circuit board starts to go, I mean that's of course the that's the heart of it. So uh, sure. But and uh, is that main, mainly have you seen them? Is it because of heat or something, or is it? Uh, no, it's usually because of abuse. I see. So that's the the majority of the lights we get back are are because of abuse where they've you know, been hit with something and the lens is cracked and then, you mm. know, they've gotten rained on and water inside and okay. moisture is. That does actually lead into my next thing. If this was powered up, could I submerge this underwater if it was like yes. in my front bumper mm -hmm. and it would be fine? Is yep. it, has it got some kind of seal or something? Yes. Okay. Yep. We have a seal that's designed like a tongue and groove seal mm -hmm. uh, and it's a silicone gasket that goes in there so it can I withstand saw it. high heat. I saw it actually because I switched to the amber yeah. lenses and it had a really nice seal and it mm -hmm. fit well and it looked yeah. like it would seal for a long time. Yeah. And it's also designed so that as the tongue goes into the groove and pushes on the gasket, it pushes it out to the side, mm -hmm. so it seals even better. So oh, we, get, okay. we get multiple points of sealing instead of just one. Okay, well, can you, what's the next evolution with your lights? Is this the ultimate, or are you guys working on something no, else? No, we're working on more. The next evolution is our IntelliLite, mm -hmm. which is controlled by an app on your phone, or we have a remote control 
okay. that you can use with it. With this, you can change the light output from zero to 100%, or you can change the color temperature from 6,500 Kelvin down to 3,000. All right. And the reason that's important is when you're in dusty conditions or fog or snow, the warmer color temperature, that 3,000 Kelvin, Mm -hmm. which would be a warm white. I mean, most okay. people, it'd be warm white. I didn't in, know this, actually. Yeah, warm white in uh, like a household bulb. Mm -hmm. That, because of the refractive index of those particles in the air, the warmer color temperatures or yellow fog lenses, the light doesn't bend as much and mm. refract okay. back at you. So, you know, we've all, yeah, most of I us have exactly driven in about. snow. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yep. You get super bright lights and you're actually getting the reflection back. Yes. And makes the lights mm -hmm. actually ineffective. Right. That so, was when I was talking, sorry to cut you yeah. off, but when I was talking with Cole originally, I'm like, so do you guys pay attention to color temperature? Like, is there science behind it? Cause I, I've gone on your website and seen like some of the labs and stuff. Yeah. And he, and I don't remember what he told me, but it was a lot of that where it's like, this color is good for this environment and you'll find that there's less eye strain. And then I, I started thinking about that, looking at car headlights versus like some, when LEDs first came out or aftermarket versus the OEM mm -hmm. ones. And it's like driving this, yes, it's bright, but I'm mad for some reason. I don't like how it looks versus a different color temperature. It's like, oh, okay, this doesn't hurt my eyes anymore. Right. And I noticed that right away with your lights mm -hmm. is, yeah. The, the color temperature, is, it's very fine-tuned. Clearly someone put thought into it and um, it's just, it's a pleasant drive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it also has to do with the anatomy of your eye, with the rods and cones, because you use different parts of your eye at night than you do mm -hmm. in bright daylight. So uh, your eyes see things differently in the daytime than they do at night. So that's another area where this warmer color temperature <laughs> creates less fatigue, mm -hmm. eye fatigue is very popular in the forestry industry where they uh, are out at night a lot especially in northern regions in the mm -hmm. winter mm -hmm. and there's snow reflecting the warmer color temperature really helps reduce the operator eye fatigue i can see especially if they're in it for a very long time mm -hmm. i want to give you a suggestion all right just for my in in installing it this is a really it's a big light yes compared to my other lights that have the same sort of circumference mm -hmm. it's still like girthier which i do love but i Ask maybe if you would consider making the bracket shorter, mm -hmm. okay. potentially, um, because there's some extra space in yep. here, and also have a keeper for the bolt. Okay. So you don't have to have a open end wrench. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the size that's in there is just big enough for this opening. Okay. So you have to have the wrench in the right position. Perfect position. Yeah. And for some of the bumpers that are tight mm -hmm. or light bars or that kind of that kind of stuff, if this had a keeper in it and it was a little squattier install yeah. would be easy because I could do it with one ratcheting yeah. uh, wrench and it would just I think the bracket would match the, mm -hmm. the overall design the, the beautiful design you guys have done yeah. the rest of the light oh great suggestion thank you thank so, you for that I, Kenny yeah. I appreciate yeah. your yeah. time thank you and uh, yeah I, well yeah. thank you for Thanks the light for, yeah we've been working a little bit over the years and yeah, yeah. good yeah, great all right that's it Woo.